Hi everyone, welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We have this extreme vehicle that can do all these incredible things and is actually at an affordable price point to many. A body with an exoskeleton made of three millimeter thick 30X cold rolled steel that is bulletproof. So how are, able, how are Tesla able to achieve all this economically? And how will they be able to produce the Cybertruck? It's expensive and difficult manufacturing with 30X cold rolled steel. How are they able to manufacture it so cheap? Well, this explains the entire concept of the vehicle design. It's able to be manufactured so much easier with all the straight lines and simple shapes with no curves. There's no paintwork on the car, so no need for a paint shop. They slow down production a lot and a large part of the vehicle production line. Even the dash is just made of paper. All these save significantly on the manufacturing process. The Giga or Terra factory in Austin is coming on at a rapid rate. As we know, this is where the Cybertruck will be first manufactured. But why build them in Texas? Texas is actually the second largest pickup market in the States after California. The rest of middle America is also a large market for pickup trucks, and Texas is situated practically in the middle of America. Texas also has Galveston Port, about three hours from Austin, so for international orders, they can be shipped right from the state. Austin is also on the Colorado River. This means that potentially some shipping can be done along the river. Shipping is a lot cheaper way to transport than road. This is, this is also located close to where SpaceX is already manufacturing the 30X cold rolled steel, so it makes sense even to be close to that in Austin. There is lots of talk about the Cybertruck having vehicle to grid or V to G due to the Cybertruck having the new 4680 battery cells. It means the vehicle will be able to do over a million miles before too much battery degradation. Elon Musk was behaving a little coy on battery day when he was asked about V to G, but basically it sounds like the Cybertruck will likely have the ability to plug into Tesla's auto better software. What does this mean? That any Cybertruck owner can connect into the grid and sell any power stored in their Cybertruck battery. Why would you want to do this? Well, energy has an inconsistent demand, and with that goes inconsistent pricing, particularly at peak hours. In peak time is when electricity is at the most expensive. So if you can connect your Cybertruck to the grid, then you can feed back into it, earning more per kilowatt than you paid for it, if you paid at all, as you may have solar. This affects the economies of Cybertruck massively. Suddenly it's a vehicle that has this ability to earn money, it's a mini mobile power station that can be developed, deployed wherever necessary, whenever necessary. But it will also be possible to earn income in addition to V2G, as the Cybertruck may also be a great addition to the robo-taxi network. With its large cargo space and ample cabin room, the Cybertruck would clearly have some great applications for the robo-taxi network. But obviously, where it's different from the other vehicles is the vault. So this means users can autonomously deliver items around town, which offers massive applications the fact it would be so dent and scratch resistant and just so rugged means it's ideal for this. Therefore, the Cybertruck rubber taxis would charge more on a per, charge more per kilometer basis than a Model 3 rubber taxi. You might even possibly be able to use one to tow a trailer to a destination. We're, we're just at the start of the potential ideas for this vehicle. So there we have it, this great new car that has all these features and specifications. So what? It's only any good if there's actually any use to it. Well, it is great for a lot of purposes and it opens up new business ideas too, as it's a tool that can do all these new applications that were not previously possible or feasible. People still need to get their heads around the possibilities. Then new types of businesses will form, especially when FSD comes in. When it's suddenly possible to deliver within an hour or so for a few dollars, then new opportunities will follow. Elon says they plan on making around 250 to 300,000 Cybertrucks a year, but this could be Elon sandbagging again. We know there is a market for pickup trucks so big that the top selling model sells nearly 1 million of them a year just in America. The Austin Gigafactory will be huge. I don't believe we have an official figure yet, but it's predicted to be around 3 to 5 million vehicles produced a year. As far as I believe, it's only the Roadster, Cybertruck and Semi vehicles that are going to be made there. So think about that a little. I thought it's a possibility that they may manufacture the Model 2 there, but it's not even designed yet and it's not meant to be launched until 2023 still. So what, what will they be manufacturing there until then? Would ma that mean that they do possibly plan on making over a million Cybertrucks a year there? They already have over a million pre-orders. It's possible. Depreciation is always the most expensive part of owning any car, excluding classic cars. We've been seeing that with Tesla's Model 3, they've been holding their price really well and are the slowest depreciating car. This is due to so much demand for the car still, but also the fact that the car just stays up to date. So if the Model 3 doesn't depreciate much, we should expect the Cybertruck to also hold its value too. Except, what if it does something very strange? 
by this stage, we're at robo taxis on V2G, then what is a Cybertruck worth? If we're honestly estimating they could bring in perhaps $50,000 a year income, admittedly there are some costs and time to achieve that, but if you can get that return by investing around the same amount, i.e. 100% annual return on investment, then no, your car will not depreciate. It will be worth what the investing industry decides based on what return they can get. In other words, probably closer to well over $100,000. So this could be what Elon means by they will become appreciating assets. It's kind of like if you have some iron ore, it's worth a certain amount. Like a car, it has a certain intrinsic value. But if you can convert that iron ore into steel, it's suddenly worth so much more. And this is like adding FSD to a car, it increases the value of it significantly. But why would Tesla sell cars so cheap when they are so valuable? If this was the case, well, they don't have robo-taxis on V2G yet. It's only speculation currently. And people only invest around $10,000 now for the robo-taxi future. Besides, I'm sure Tesla will find lots more ways of earning money from you during the vehicle lifetime. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.